Hello, everybody. This is Jenny Lee to come here. I am with another coach, Louis Armstrong. Mm -hmm. At the other end of the world in England, I am in Florida today, mm -hmm. here sharing with you some message. Let me welcome Louise. Hi, mm -hmm. Louise. Hello, hello. It's lovely to be yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for joining me together. And this is the beginning of this video series, So for Women's Journey. And I'm very excited that we start today, especially under the current situation. We like to have the space for some of you that if we could share message, information, tips, guidance, and information inspire you and learn together, grow together, that's the mission for this video series. So today is our intro, so allow me to introduce a little bit of our journey, both mine and Louise, and then we will start to share on, uh, some information messages on the topic of overwhelm, anxiety, and isolation that everybody is experiencing right now. Okay, so Louise, I will start first. Mm -hmm. So, um, Jenny Lee Sikon, I uh, do as a, a joyful living coach and so purpose coach and EFT practitioner. I was born and grew up from Asian family, traditional Asian family and a culture. So I always follow the society value and tribe value to pursue external success. So that's where I started my journey and I did well, always was a good girl following, you know, family, uh, uh, society, school school, you know, uh, workplace, you know, value and rules. And I did well as a career coach consultant for many years, was happy. I thought my life is just like that. Until many years later, I was confused and found that higher title, uh, uh, more money, higher power, don't exactly bring the happiness and the fulfillment, fulfillment you know, into people's lives. That's the moment when I started to feel confused and lost. I started to pray and say, what's my next? Because I want to help. I don't feel I'm helping anymore. Some people, executives, even feel less happier, less fulfilled, and didn't have real life with the family. So then my life suddenly turned upside down. I got hit in every area in my life. So I was, you know, very unhappy and got stuck, trapped in some emotional state, unhappy, negative for many, for a long time until I finally didn't have the strength to fight anymore. So I had to, I was enforced to surrender and finally came out to a place like awakening, awakened, and uh, was reguided to a new path. So finally, I came out this way, in this place, doing this work, because I knew that I was meant to experience. And that brought me to this path to fulfill my soul's purpose. So a lot of issues, complicated life situation I went through, and I learned, and I got a call. And I knew there are many people out there, maybe including you. You are experiencing something. So that's why, you know, we are here. I'm here to share, to embrace everything, work together. So pretty much that's my story. Mm -hmm. And now I help people, you know, who feel trapped and held back. So we can finally use some approaches, tools to come out. So walking on our journey. So thank you. And uh, Louise, now it's your turn. Let me let, let you know here your story. 
Thank you, Jenny. That was beautiful. And uh, what a beautiful introduction and a journey you've been on. And, you know, so many people need you. You know, we really are. We really are needed there. So thank you so much. Well, I'm a psychotherapist and a coach. Um, I'm trained in many different modalities, the latest one being brain work is recursive brain working recursive therapy. And at the moment I'm helping our NHS staff um, stay on the front line. So my real um, if you like my little little baby, my expertise lies in helping people heal from childhood trauma because this shows up in our adult life through depression, anxiety, through addictions, through relationship breakdowns. And you know, most of these issues start in childhood because that's where our programs and our patterns are created. And so I myself have suffered a very, very destructive relationship with my mother, which ended up with my daughter walking out of my life and it, it, my health, I've had very serious health issues and financial issues, a whole lot. So it was a complete train crash, a big disaster. But through seeking help and putting my hand up and saying, I haven't got a clue what to do, please help me, which is actually your biggest sign of strength. And if you're out there struggling alone, thinking you've got to do it by yourself, you haven't. You know, the, some of the most, all of the successful people actually in the world have all asked for help. And that is the best thing you can do. And since I did ask for help, my whole life has transformed and got better and better as it's gone along. And I was actually invited to train as a coach myself by my coach. So um, mm -hmm. that's how my journey started. And now I, I do a lot more in the psychotherapy, in the, in the therapy field, um, with the healing as well. So that's really where I am now. My whole business is online and I've... Um, I've written a book. I know you've written a book, haven't you, um, Jenny? My, my book's just about to be launched. So um, it's really getting oh, our... wonderful, yes. Thank you. Getting our message out there that yeah. everyone can change. And I know now that, you know, we, we've done our little introductions now, and now we're really going to focus on how we are all affected with this virus that no one can escape from unless you've been living under a rock since sort of early on this year you know everyone is affected in some way and we really yeah. just want to help you this week um we're going to talk about overwhelm and anxiety and what isolation means to you and how you can yeah. overcome these feelings so yes it, yeah. um, it's very much um what's going on now and we were just actually talking earlier we're talking about our hair because my hair is doing my head in. oh yeah <laughs> and i seriously need the hairdresser i mean you know it's um, me the it same we talk about that yeah, yeah i want to do my haircut but I know. no so, flowers open yeah but, but it's affecting you know, that's real. yeah this is that's our current real. life it's real everybody so <laughs> we'll need a hairdresser yeah <laughs> so, uh, yes and uh, you know since you mentioned this yeah we're going to start you know very shortly about the uh, overwhelm anxiety isolation but you did mention feelings so these are feelings emotions that i think also for us both to reconnect originally mm -hmm. you had the pod, uh, uh, podcast you know show and i went on your show once speaking about in the child relationship you are so correct it's all going back to the past childhood also mm -hmm. but it's also all about feelings now you are called to do emotional intelligence mastery mm -hmm. so deal with this this stuff and me also called to use the tool emotional freedom technique it's mm -hmm. also about emotional freedom so under this current situation, how we can still get the freedom? So it's hard. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about that. So overwhelm first. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like you to share with us a little bit, Louise, first, you know, how you feel, all of us, right, me the same. How do you feel overwhelmed and uh, what's your message today mm -hmm. you like to bring to us? <clears throat> Yeah, just keep it really um, short here because overwhelm is a massive topic. And if we go into overwhelm or confusion, these states of mind, we actually do not move forwards. We stay stuck or we move backwards. And as human beings, we're always growing and we always want to move forwards. And so 
with what's going on in this world today, you could feel very overwhelmed by the amount of news that's on, the information that's on. Should you wear this mask? Should you stand here? When are you allowed out? You know, there's so much information. Yeah. You could watch this yeah. stuff 24 seven and be yeah. so consumed and then you can go on social media and you may be feeling so overwhelmed by all of this, you just don't know what to do. You know, if you go to the supermarket and you stand in the queue, do you come home? Do you strip off all your clothes? Do you, what's the best thing to do, you know? Because everybody's got their own bit of an opinion and story and one government says this and another government says that. So it can be very difficult to work out what is best yeah. for me, you know? But um, yeah. you do need to find for you what, what works for you. Just because your friend does something or someone else, you know, as, as mentioning the shower, my friend goes to the supermarket. She doesn't, she comes home, she doesn't touch her shopping for three days. She leaves it all and she showers completely. She doesn't touch any post coming in. This is right for her. That would stress me out. I don't actually do that for, for me. I'm very careful with, I have a mask, I wear gloves, I wash my hands, um, but I don't wash all my clothes. So I work out what is right for me. So work out yeah. what is right for you. If it feels right for you, you do it. Oh, yeah. And don't oh, be yeah. judged by anyone else because we've all got our own thing. So that's yes. just one, one small tip there to bring in to, um, so that we stop feeling we've got to do it all. Yeah, that's, so important because otherwise you know you get more information then you feel more overwhelmed and you just got trapped and cannot come out mm. so yeah and uh correct you mentioned overwhelm is really about the massive massive so the mm. global energy actually mm. the planet maybe it, it's just changing and shifting shake up a lot of stuff off and everywhere, the whole world, all the news, everything, it's almost like, you know, all the energies pulling us into different directions. And if we just allow our mind, to, you know, freely to listen, it's just like, you know, split inside. And because you are pulling into different directions, if you don't have the focus, and really, you don't know what to do, and then you feel more upset. And then anxious, anxiety hits in, comes in. So I totally agree with you. You know, do whatever it works for you. And for me, I like to share, you know, because I still do work online, you know, help people do the session, do healing, coaching. And uh, I also felt, you know, many times that's overwhelmed, exhausted, tired, don't mm -hmm. have energy or so. But, you know, what I practice you know, of course, for many years, is to just bring myself back to all the centering, grounding exercise. And also, one big tip I like to share is to know your focus. Even though your focus, maybe for this hour, for this half day, it's doing nothing. It's doing self-caring. Or it's, you know, uh, doing exercise or, you know, just know what you want and just listen to your body honor your body and feel instead of only think because your feelings never lie and they tell you the truth about what you need if it's too much you just got shut down some channels so that you don't listen to those noises not mentioning subconsciously we already have been many of us, including us, listening to those old stuff, you know, that got stuck from the past, those little voices. So focus, know your intention, what your body, mind, and, you know, spirit need for this moment. That will really help you to come back to this centered place and filtering some noises yeah yes. beautiful it is a uh, it is all about coming back you know and, and grounding ourselves and uh because we choose what comes into our space and so it is uh, yeah i so agree yes. they're filtering out the noise because that's all it is is noise 
and yeah. you you do get to choose what you think and what comes into your space you might not think it's a choice but it's always a choice and if you start yeah. using that language i choose you will yeah. find yeah. yourself feeling a lot more empowered and much less overwhelmed. oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah i like that because i choose the simple word two words mm. right simple it right. really shift shift our you know mm -hmm. mind thinking it's like it's not like you know we are stuck we don't have power we do have choice only mm -hmm. if we want to bring the power back you know from our mind to come absolutely to yes yes wonderful and i yes. think that um brings us nicely on to isolation because yeah you know, these things social distancing and isolation not being allowed out you know is we're all suffering in some way, you know, we're all suffering in some way. So have you got a tip on isolation or how, how are you coping or any of your clients journey? Oh yeah. Isolation is such, you know, a big thing because especially I heard many people, if they are more like an extrovert kind, and usually they want to go out to move around to connect with people see in person hug kiss yesterday in my complex a lady you know a new a neighbor we just met and chatted a little bit very happy to know each other and connect and she forgot hey jenny nice meeting you and shaking the head oh, really? and, oh. and then suddenly in the middle we say oh we are sorry we forgot we should not mm. touch everything then she said i feel so bad i said yes i also, i know you know people cannot hug or so it's really hard the connection at all levels physical or so uh, uh mental you know emotional especially you know and also spiritually mm -hmm. so how we could actually connect of course online thanks to the high tech even though i don't really like it that much i'm not a technical person but thanks to the high tech we could even connect this way mm -hmm. and uh, this kind of connection but really the important point is like when you feel isolated you know what is missing it's the insecurity or the acknowledgement of yourself of course insecurity right so the the, the thing for you i know i like to add this point for some of us because we came a long way to our current place to maybe on the calling to also healed a lot and developed a lot but back then you know in our childhood we had some issue you mentioned yours i had mine you know i my father was so restricted you know like criticized all the time i heard heard those noises all the time the messages like you know you are still not enough you are still this and that so we went through healed and came out but didn't feel the connection because in back to the childhood it was broken already it's mm -hmm. disconnected with the tribe with this so finally we developed we come into the new place we felt like not really fit to the old tribe mm. anymore i bet you have similar experiences of feeling mm. but then you know where and also we move people move i know you lived in different countries i lived in different countries and then you know move to the new places or so where we really fit or we maybe try to fit everywhere so finally we feel like you know not fitting so that kind of isolation as well mm -hmm. so, but that's too deep but no matter what isolation it's really about coming to your heart to feel what your heart is desiring your soul is wanting it's again still the love and accepting so for me, I feel very fortunate, you know, we have the connection like this in our community, society, with a lot of cultures. And also I have, you know, the community of my work, you know, so we can get online. We have the circle, we share the information, we could connect more. Finally, we feel 
safe in this kind of circle to talk and express, to be just be our true self. Mm -hmm. Don't need to have concern about public social media everywhere they judge you you are having concerning you know about being everything so that's again too much so how to come back to your centered place knowing what you need and find a circle that feels connected and then stay there maybe you know start to connect and share more so that's what i can share mm. now come to you I'd love to hear mm. from you beautiful yeah it is um it is, it is a time i think very much so johnny that we can do that and we must do that really so that we come out of this you know better versions of ourselves and i think isolation actually is a fantastic time in respect that we can become friends with ourselves because if you become yeah. your own best friend yeah you yeah. will never be lonely again and so many of us have perhaps got much more time and we're not using you know other things that are masking us that are taking us away from the true self you know we we're always out there being busy socializing doing sports oh, events yeah. going to the theater the pubs the restaurants you know all these things have been taken away from us and so now perhaps is the time to look at the people who are in your life are they serving you are these really your friends you know this is the time to actually write all the names down and think you know am i aligned with you and perhaps let have less contact with those people who aren't aligned with you and then look at the people you really care about and make much more contact with them you know when you feel and look at when you've got someone's picture in your mind and you feel that energy towards them they actually sense that they feel yeah. that and so yeah i would really encourage everyone out there to really look at your relationships and decide which ones are working for you and spend time alone get to know yourself what do you like in life you know how kind are you to yourself what fills you with joy is it reading a book is it painting it may be none of those things just people tell you to do it because now you should become an artist yeah. because we've all got this time at home absolute yeah. rubbish you know yeah. if you don't like yeah. art don't do it but find there'll be something for you you know it might be doing the jigsaw puzzle it might be all these things allow you to remain focused whilst yeah. you are in that sense that hypnotic state which is a very relaxed state of mind and when you're in that state of mind you tap into the true you and that's when yeah. you can really come from this space and move forward yeah. and so i think oh, this yeah. is a brilliant time to um to, to use this isolation that has been enforced on us because we can't totally. do you know anything about it so we might as well make the most of our time so when we're ready when we're ready to be let out we are those better people we know the sorts of relationships that we want we know ourselves so much better so actually yeah. Yeah. this has been a wonderful nurturing time so that's how i would look at you know I moving forward that. with isolation yes. yes yes i cannot agree with more about this point it's the best timing so let me add something because we talk about overwhelm isolation anxiety fear mm -hmm. So I do know that from all the time, you know, we do our work and mm -hmm. especially right now, because for some people, it's really hard for them and they feel so anxious. It's not just only coming from COVID-19. It's also because they have finally some time to space that they will be with themselves. So that's not safe for some people because, you know, they have the fear of, you know, uh, uh, staying at the present moment because of something, you know, whatever in life, unconsciously they don't know, but actually some noises were always there telling them that it's not safe to stay at the present moment. That's why people, intend to keep busy 
you know, keep thinking, keep doing, so that they don't really have the space. They cannot relax. Mm -hmm. That's relax because of that. So fear of confronting their fear, their feelings, it's really. Because now when you have time, you don't have that many things to do. You have to confront it and it's scary and it's not safe. And also you mentioned, you know, the, uh, the, the, the space inside the home or so I also know. And uh, me, the same, everybody, now everybody's in the house. Mm -hmm. So you have more chances to confront your family members or whatever I heard. Many people mention, oh, I got this triggered from, you know, who and who, spouse, children, or, or whatever. And it's so, so intense, so noisy, so tired or so. You know, these are all the stuff. These, the stuff actually, it's always there. We don't really have the chance to really confront it. So that's why when they are coming up right now, actually it's a good thing for us to go within, to check our heart, see what's there, what made us feel scared. A lot of, you know, of course, real family and uh, real uh, reality problems in life, financial relationship, children, or whatever. So also a lot of stuff is about the disconnection of with our higher self or spiritually. Even though you don't need to be religious, but still you had that have that layer, spiritual layer of connection. So when you could spiritually connect it, which is also connecting to your heart, knowing that you are loved, the unconditional love is always there, but you need to unconditionally love yourself first mm -hmm. so that you know it's there, you are protect, protected, and you are safe. The universe, God, or whatever you use, is backing you up. But without this deep connection with yourself, you won't feel this feeling of protection and the love and the safety and uh, security. So, you know, all the fear or so we could finally, you know, release more and more when you come to the center again, connecting. And then those noises will start to fade away. Mm -hmm. That's what I like to add. Mm -hmm. Maybe you also have something more about the anxiety, mm -hmm. the reality of the life, my problem. Yeah, no, that's lovely, Jenny. Lovely, yeah. Um, well, anxiety, I think, is the most talked about word we have today. And it's a word that comes into my office with every client and you, you hear it everywhere. My anxiety is what people label it as, actually. So it's become a very overused word. And I think because we are living in such an insecure world and a world where we it's it's the unknown we don't actually know what's going to happen and that triggers yes. a certain amount of anxiety in all of us yes. and yes. i believe the big thing to remember that actually anxiety is not real there is no such thing as anxiety the effects of anxiety are very real the physical effects especially you know the sweaty palms you can get a very rapid pulse your heart's really really oh yeah People yeah. can actually end up in hospital. You can end up in the ER. Oh, yeah. Heart attack. So they're very, very real, the symptoms. But actually, the anxiety attack is not real because there's nothing attacking you. There's absolutely nothing going on in your world. All that's happening is somewhere in your past, you have felt some form of stress in a certain situation. Oh, yeah. And your yeah. mind now is always on the alert for anything yeah. similar and if it sees anything vaguely the same as that, it will go boom. Yeah, uh, yeah. fight and flight, yes. Exactly. And so once we hit that fight or flight, we just go full blown into an anxiety attack. But there's nothing real, it's just a thought. So there's nothing really yeah. happening to you. It is literally your thoughts. Yeah. So Let me cut in and add this, uh, Louise, when you talk about this. Yeah, it's true that Fear is a feeling, but not a real danger. That's what you said, actually. Mm. Yeah, yeah, fear is, um, 
fear will always be with us. You will always, always feel fear and you need to feel fear. Fear is actually helping you simply because if you didn't feel fear, you would just walk out in front of a bus and then you would get run over. So, you know, you yeah. have to develop a fear. Otherwise it's there to protect you. So if you look at the fear being, it's there to protect you. So the anxieties that are coming or being triggered are already inside of you. So you yeah. already have these anxieties. It's just that our situation is triggering them. And one of the yeah. best things you can do is to focus on your breathing because yeah. When you calm your breathing and you take slower breaths, what happens is, is the signal to the mind is, aha, she's in control. Oh, yeah. Oh, she's yeah. in control. Because it's an, the only automated response that you can control. It also gives your brain an extra boost of oxygen so you actually feel stronger. So oh, yeah. I, the best breath that I get, I get my clients to practice is the four, seven, eight breath. You breathe in for the count of yes. four, mm -hmm. you hold it for the count of seven, and you breathe out for the count of eight. And whilst yes. you're doing that, if you bring any positive picture to mind, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be of your dog, a sunset. It could be of you having a cup of tea. It could, it could be anything. Just yes. a picture that makes you feel good. If you yeah. do that breathing, four, seven, eight, and bring that positive picture to mind, you will change your state. And when totally you change agree. your physical state, you change your mental state. And you oh, will yeah. begin to calm down. And eventually your mind will recognize that there's no need to go into a panic attack because you're breathing calmly. So even if that same memory comes up in your mind you will not react in the same way so you're training your mind to react differently and i think you can use this every day because all of us are feeling some form of anxiety you know some of us much more so than others but you can yes. still use you know the same technique and some of my clients just having the understanding that the anxiety isn't real they think are you serious it's not real no it really is not real it's just you are producing these symptoms, but there's nothing hurting you. There's nothing there. Oh, yeah. You're still oh, in your yeah. room. Everything's still fine. Yes. Yes. I, I love that. And uh, I'd like to add a little bit on that. You know, when we do the breathing exercise, I do this also and help my clients as well. You bring yourself at all levels. You bring your attention to your body, to your mind, to your emotion and the spirit. You know, your whole being is here. So bring you back to the, the, the very powerful moment of now. Yeah. Actually, when you are at this now moment, you should not have, you know, these problems because they are there. But you are fully connected here. And now, just like me and you, Luis, we are talking, we are totally in our conversation, content, and when you're doing the breathing, it's the same thing. You are here now, so our life just goes like second by second, like that. So when you are fully connected at this moment of now, breathing is now. So next moment you cook is now, and you read is now. Anytime when you start to feel anxious, we could be aware, be cautious about our vibration. Uh-oh, I am like distracted and pulled away from my center place now. Let me come back, you know, do the breathing, you know, start to feel about your body. Pay attention to all the existence so that way really really you know bring you back from all these worrying about future tomorrow because tomorrow you could you know worry about tomorrow by then but now at this moment again take care of each moment now otherwise if you're worried it's just really using your imagination to rehearse you know about the problems you don't want to have actually mm -hmm. so come back to stay at this moment our mind does the same work you can imagine 
positive side, you can also imagine negative side, worry about the problem, you can also imagine and create some nice outcome, that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. also for me, I love to go to the nature, to the complex by the lake, you know, little animals my, in my house, little duck family lately come to visit me every day. I just feel oh. so, so loved and connected, you know, peaceful. Yeah. So yeah, that's so that's beautiful that's to really... connect with nature. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It, so, yeah. It is all about staying in the now and the present moment. And when you are focused and you are present, it means you're not thinking. Because as soon as you are thinking, it means you are living in the past. Yeah. And so these exercises, you know, of cooking, of sewing, of reading, of doing yoga. Anything that requires focused attention stops you thinking. And as yeah. soon as you're in the present moment, it's much, much easier to, like Jenny says, center yourself, focus in on your breathing. And all that past nonsense, all those stories that you tell yourself, all those stories that everyone else has told you and through repetition have become your beliefs, fade away. You don't even realize any of those. And for me, you know, I love being, we've just moved house and we have the most beautiful garden. And so I spend a lot of time in the oh, garden. Nice. The reason why we are attracted to nature so much is because of the alignment of the energy. And so it's a yeah. really good thing if you can take a walk during this time is to be in nature because yeah. that nature is pure energy. It's not got any negative belief programs in it yeah. or people, yeah. you know, leaves thinking they're not good enough or branches, you know, absolutely yeah. the whole of nature is yeah. absolutely vibrating, you know, on that pure level. And that's why we're attracted to nature and it's why we're attracted to babies because um, yeah. they exude yeah. pure it's energy. Pure, yeah. pure love and it unconditional. It's not being tainted by um, anything. Yeah. So, I really encourage you, if you can, if you can take that walk, if you're allowed out, if not, create it in your mind or look at it on social media, but bring yeah. that nature back to you and keep focused attention, whether it's meditation or yoga or sewing yeah, yeah, or yeah, art yeah, yeah, or yeah. whatever, um, yeah, whatever yeah. it is for you. Yeah, yeah. that's all I was going to bring in there on that. Yeah. And the finally, because the timing, you know. Yeah, of course, it always just runs away, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can talk about this forever, especially these three areas, are such, mm. you know, so big areas. Yes. I like to add, you know, the final point, no matter what, it is okay, no judging and no mm. self-judging. So if we do have all these, you know, feelings come up or from the past or whatever, it's totally fine. Mm. Use, you know, find some tool. We have so many tools out there. Find some ways to get help, support or whatever, but all in all, accepting. And also, I like to say, express it. Give all these emotions, overwhelm, stress, fear, anxiety, and isolation, whatever feeling out let to let them come out don't just suppress push them all down for many many years later it will they will find some outlet to come out if you don't give them the healthy outlet mm -hmm. go to you mentioned already some symptoms or so you know physical symptoms mm -hmm. they will find those ways so mm -hmm. accept embrace and be peace with them find a way to let them out journaling my tool you you know you have your tool all these kind of tools so we you know we're not talking about this right now so just the overall introduction and sharing so you have anything to add uh louise i think that's all for this session today yeah. as i say it, yeah. it was an yeah. introduction and a little insight yeah. as to how to help yeah. you to cope during yeah. you know this pandemic that we're yeah. all affected by and we both really hope that you've taken, you know, a few tips from here and we're very open um, to any questions at all directly, you know, contacting Jenny yourself or myself or, you yeah. know, you can um, come into our groups and ask, you know, openly there. It's, um, it's very yeah. important. 
to you know be able to share and we're both very open people so please feel free to <laughs> yes them. yeah and also we have different circle group or whatever mm -hmm. for you to connect mm -hmm. also we will put this information you know in the post uh, uh of this uh, video when we uh yeah finally we'll, we'll can post that on uh, youtube yeah. and you will find the uh the contact information and mm -hmm. also uh this will be a series it's not just mm -hmm. one thing one time thing so uh i think louise will come back maybe in two weeks time yeah right? i think we're going to so do two months we will pick another topic and mm -hmm. at the meantime in the meantime just louise, like louise said welcome to let us know your biggest issue most challenging issue you mm -hmm. want us to talk about and share more or even we can we have so many real cases we mm -hmm. could share right so it's inspiring Absolutely. so yeah. yeah so we will come back and do that we so, will we will yeah. we will so, uh, so thank you so today. much yeah thank you louise hopefully two weeks later we can have the chance to cut oh. our hair <laughs> oh, just cut it off and dye it it's dreadful <laughs> okay yeah thank you thank you again thank you all you know you are watching now or later or whatever you know for your you know watching and please share with someone your loved ones friends or so you think who might need these kind of information and support mm -hmm. i hope we can connect soon absolutely wonderful take care yeah. bye, -bye. bye bye